This video is sponsored by Resound, one of the best podcasting tools I've ever used. If you have any interest in creating a podcast or editing audio, stay tuned to the end of the video for more information. We all know Tony Soprano as the iconic boss of the North Jersey Mafia. The show is about his rise and fall over the course of the show's six seasons. However, fans will remember that he didn't start out as boss. In the beginning of the first season, that role was filled by Jackie Aprile. Jackie Aprile Sr. was the acting boss at the start of the show, while the family's actual boss, Eric Lee DeMeo, was serving what is presumably a life sentence in Springfield. However, Jackie isn't around long, as he's only introduced in the second episode of the show and dies in the fourth from stomach cancer. Jackie's death then sets off a conflict between Tony and his uncle over who would take over the position. Though Jackie is a relatively minor character in terms of his appearance on the show, he's also one of the most intriguing. He's portrayed as a highly competent mobster with deep relations with other major characters, but his short screen time has left many fans wondering what to make of him. So in this video, let's examine everything we know about the man. Maybe I should name a successor. This day and age, who wants the fucking job? Giacomo Michael April, known as Jackie for short, was a childhood friend of Tony's. He and Tony got into trouble together growing up, and it's implied that Jackie was more of a leader in these situations. Tony seemed to really respect and idolize Jackie, and Jackie was actually the one who had the idea for them to rob Feech Lamana's card game. And I gotta give you father credit for this. He had balls as big as an Irish broad's ass. When the boys reach their early 20s, they form their own crew along with Ralph Cifaretto and Silvio Dante. They did little scams like we see other younger guys do on the show. However, not satisfied with this, Jackie suggested that they rob Feach's card game in an attempt to win respect. After taking it down, a sit-down was held and some of the money was returned. However, thanks to Tony's father and Jackie's older brother Richie being made guys, they faced no serious punishment and actually became respected as serious players. Jackie and Tony were then on the fast track to getting made. We know that Jackie did a few stints in prison during this time. Fabian Petrullio, the informant that Tony sees in the episode College, did time with Jackie in Lewisburg. However, it doesn't seem like any of these counts were long, and Jackie was able to maintain his position within the mob. Eventually, Jackie and Tony both became captains in the family. Tony took over his father's crew after he died, and we can assume that Jackie took over his brother Richie's after he went away to prison. We don't know much about Jackie's early days in the Mafia, but it's stated that both he and Richie moved heroin to make money. I moved a lot of H for you and your brother, and you guys made the lion's share. When the boss of the family, Eric Lee DeMeo, was sent to prison, there was a conflict over who would take over for him. We don't know how Jackie was chosen specifically, but we do know that there was some fighting between him and Junior, who believed that he should have the title due to his seniority. But he was lying to be boss. Now he's got to take orders from somebody who used to fetch him as Sam Booker. Hey, fuck him. After a short conflict, they were able to negotiate a peace, and Jackie became acting boss. It's interesting that Tony supported Jackie against his own uncle. This is probably due to him and Tony being friends since childhood, so he probably knew he would rise fast with Jackie as boss. However, it is still strange that Tony sided against his own family, and the seeds that this sowed would eventually lead to fighting between the two that we see in the first season. As boss, Jackie was well respected by everyone in the family. He was considered a fair leader, and he was never greedy with his captains. I mean, when Jackie was acting boss, no one minded because it all evened out at the end of the day. But your uncle, Madon, does he eat alone? He doesn't even pass the salt. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jackie did not get to be boss for long. After a few years, he was diagnosed with stomach cancer. And despite treatment, he eventually passes away. His death is devastating for Tony, who has to watch one of his oldest friends fade away. But Jackie, to see this... A strong, beautiful man. Just wither away to nothing. 
Overall, Jackie is a very intriguing character. His rise to power is unusual for someone his age, and it just makes me wish we knew more about him. What was it about him that made him so successful? Why did Tony, a man known for his pride and contempt for authority, follow Jackie so devotedly? And it doesn't just seem to be him. Of the few times he's mentioned, he's practically worshipped. I gotta tell you, your brother Jackie was like a fucking god. Great leader. However, as successful as Jackie was as a mobster, his biggest failing was as a father. Jackie has two children, his daughter Kelly April and his son Jackie Jr. Not wanting his son to follow him into the mob, he encouraged him to go to medical school and become a doctor. Your dad and me, you know how close we were? He never wanted this for you. He wanted you to be a doctor. However, despite pushing his son towards academics, he didn't seem to realize how difficult it was for him. Jackie Jr. struggled with school and maintaining his grades, something his father wrote off instead of addressing. Jack tried to lay off all Jackie's problems on a learning disorder, but... Well, stupidity would be a learning disorder, wouldn't it? This putting off of problems instead of addressing them seems to have been a trend when it came to his son. Mendo says that Jackie Jr.'s father never paid attention to his actions or punished him at all for his mistakes. When you would ask him, like, aren't you afraid what your parents are going to say about, I don't know, whatever, and he would just go, they don't give a shit. This resulted in Jackie Jr. being extremely spoiled and lazy. Though he went to college to make his old man happy, what he really wanted to do was become a gangster like him. My brother's whole stupid, pathetic dream was to follow in our father's footsteps. Tony tried to keep Jackie Jr. out of the life like his father wanted, but he continued to push his luck with his petty capers. This culminated with him attempting to emulate his father and rob a card game like he did. Unlike his father, though, Jackie Jr. and his friends ended up shooting up the place due to being high on drugs. Though he escapes, his life is basically over because he wounded a made guy. Though Tony and Ralphie, who is dating Jackie's mother Rosalie, both claim to want to spare him due to his father, in reality, they're both just trying to push the responsibility onto the other. In the end, Ralph has Jackie Jr. killed, and it's actually Jackie's cousin Vito that ends up pulling the trigger. The whole Jackie Jr. affair demonstrates how little these guys care about each other, even when they're supposedly best friends. Despite promising to look out for his family, Tony's eager to have Jackie Jr. killed when he becomes a nuisance for him. Even Uncle June talks about how few people show up to Jackie Jr.'s funeral, an insult to the family that had once ruled North Jersey. You know, if Jackie Sr. was still acting boss, would a child passed away? This place would be filled to the rafters. Flower cars up and down the block. No matter what the boy had done. We should also talk about his relationship to his wife, Rosalie. We don't know much about their marriage overall. We only have one scene with them together before he dies, though it does seem like she's supportive of him while he's getting his treatment. However, their marriage seems to have had problems as well. Rosalie mentions to Carmela that she was having an affair with a guy from her gym named Steve. She broke it off after Jackie got sick, but we can see that there were problems between the two. From what we saw with the nurse, it's likely that Jackie had Gumars as well. Rosalie also says that after Jack died, she found out how much money was left for her, and there wasn't as much as she was expecting. This is something that Carmela fears as well, that there isn't going to be enough for her to live on if Tony dies or is arrested. Now, Rosalie does not seem to be living the high life after Jackie dies, but she was able to stay in her house and doesn't seem to have worked an actual job. Now, some of that might have been from Ralph, who dated her shortly after Jackie died. But that also brings up another interesting point. It seems a little weird that Ralph, someone who was apparently close to Jackie growing up, would date his widow. I mean, could you imagine someone like Silvio dating Carmela if Tony died? It just seems a little disrespectful to the memory of a man that everyone loved and respected so much. I know it's tough on you. I'm the guy that's dating your mom. Dating? Don't get fucking filthy about it. But again, I think it's a statement about how much these guys actually care about each other. No matter what they say on the surface, underneath it, they're just doing whatever is best for themselves. 
Despite the supposed friendship between the Sopranos and the Aprils, Tony actually oversees the almost complete destruction of the family, but that's a topic for next time. For now, I'll leave it at this. If the show has one big missed opportunity, it's Jackie Aprile Sr. His backstory is fascinating, and the relationship that he supposedly had with many of the major characters on the show is something that should have been explored more. I would have loved it if we could have had more flashbacks with Jackie, or more stories about the other characters' relationship with him. I think it would have given the show that much more depth to explore this really fascinating character. I may be acting boss while the old man's a guest in the government, but it was somebody tell my bowels because they don't obey. Again, special thank you to the sponsor of this video, Resound. Resound is an AI audio editing tool for podcasts. It automatically detects edits such as filler words and allows you to easily remove them from your tracks. I recently started a new podcast called Into the Kinoverse, which you can find on Spotify. It's sort of a reboot of my previous podcast, and you should definitely check it out. Resound has been a fantastic tool for getting these episodes made. Before Resound, when I needed to edit my podcast, I would have to spend hours manually going through my audio tracks and removing every um and uh by hand. It really dragged out the process. What I love about Resound is the fact that you get to select whether you keep or cut the suggested edits. There are some times when I want to leave a word in because removing it would sound unnatural. Other tools that just automatically remove everything don't give you this level of control. You can try Resound for free by using my link in the description. Hey, jerk off! Ops Gracing Media, Daz J Kid, Sam Cedarland, Celery Man, Jenna Marie Johnson, Brad Smith Studios, Uncle Mike, Matt Joyce, Countess Von Zarevich, and Luke P. 